Hey, welcome back to the channel, guys. So today, um, I'm in Point Pleasant, New Jersey. I'm back at a house I was at before, um, correcting some issues that the home inspector had for sale of this house. So I'll take you on a little journey today. We're gonna to be bonding some CSST gas, flexible gas piping, and we're gonna be hanging a ceiling fan. We're gonna be doing maintenance and repair on a attic fan, which I haven't even seen yet. Uh, there's still a splice down in the basement that needs a junction box. And I think a few other things that I just that are on the report list. So I hope you enjoy this video. And um, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. And uh, thanks for coming back. Let's get to it. So the first thing I want to address here is my microphone that I use to make these videos is not working. So I'm using the built-in microphone on my computer for the time being. So I hope the audio comes out well. The first thing I wanted to do was the CSST grounding bond. And I wasn't sure how I was going to approach this at first. I actually had to look at the NEC to see how I'm supposed to do this. Uh, I've done it a few times for a generator. So basically, it's not an electro grounding electroconductor. It's just a bond to the grounded system. So I'm coming out of this sub panel right here with number six stranded copper wire. And I'm going to attach it to the equipment grounding conductor terminals inside this sub panel, the main lug only panel. Labeling this bonding conductor is not required, although I think it's a nice touch uh, so people know what exactly that conductor is doing in case another electrician is there one day is not sure. Uh, now we know exactly what that conductor is doing. So I've worked at this house quite often in the last five years or so, um, and I've been down in this crawl space before. It's tight, but I am able to get there. I did buy this mechanics creeper specifically for this job five years ago, and uh, here I am again on it. I was called out because on the inspection report, the inspector had noted that the grounding electroconductor was not attached to the water main within five feet of entering the building. So I went down here to examine exactly what was going on and what I found was that the metal water pipes were grounded and the incoming piping from the town was actually PVC. The water piping system is grounded, I'm sorry, is bonded to the system grounded neutral at the service equipment. Okay, so there's the water main except we got to make the electro connection to where it comes and enters the house over there in that corner. Code says it's got to be within five feet of where it enters the building. So that's what we're doing. All right, so here we go. Oh, God. Tight as fucking here. Yeah, 
In order for an underground metal water pipe or any kind of metal piping to be a grounding electrode or be considered a grounding electrode, it must be metal and it must be in contact with the earth for a minimum of 10 feet. But this is plastic. This is plastic coming in from the street. This does not constitute an electrode. So wherever the bond is, is fine. Because you can't use that water pipe as an electrode because it's plastic coming from the supply in the city. <clears throat> So this is what we got to put into a junction box here.
correcting some minor issues before the sale of the house. And one of the issues is the attic fan, the attic exhaust fan, which is mounted to the roof, is not working. Now, I've already been up here, but I want to show you why I can't perform routine maintenance on a burned out motor. And the reason why is because the new ductwork that was installed, I don't know when, prevents me from reaching the exhaust fan. It's on the other side. So it's physically impossible just to get the old fan out and put the new fan in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disconnect the fan and we'll have a roofer come in and take the old fan out, put the new one in, and then I'll wire up the new fan. But the problem with that is of course, that the next time this happens in six or seven or eight years when that motor burns out is you're gonna have the same exact problem. So this is why it's important for other trades to know other trades. Now, I don't mean, I don't wanna blame the HVAC guy, but he's the one who installed this ductwork and it's in the way and now I can't get to it. So that's a big problem. So I'm gonna disconnect it and leave that on my invoice and uh, let the, the seller know what I've done. And that's up to him whether or not he wants to do that now or give the buyer a credit. And uh, we could just deal with that later. Whether or not it's me, I don't know. But I'm gonna make this safer. We're gonna address it and do the best, what I think is the best solution for the time being. Okay, so the last thing on our list of corrections to make here is a, um, is a missing LB cover. So it's a two inch LB that <clears throat> feeds this panel right here. This is a main lug only panel. And as you can see there, I put the label on there that this is the, the main breaker can be found on the side of the house. So this is a main lug only, AKA a sub panel. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, that'll do it for today. Sorry I haven't been a, uh, a lot of videos lately. I don't know if you know, but uh, my wife got the COVID for the first time. And of course I got it for the second time from her most likely. And then uh, her son was also sick. So it was a little crazy around the house for the last couple weeks. And not to use that as an excuse, but that's why I haven't uploaded any videos lately. Me. So uh, I've been busy. Um, if you haven't already liked this video, please. And if you like the content, I'd like to see that you subscribe. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.